Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our session. I'm Gail Murdoch, General Manager at Nimbus Software, and I'm pleased to introduce you to the first of many webinars that will introduce our current and new next generation products, products that will give you the freedom to focus on what really matters. Today, we're going to cover our GL Reporter. We're really excited about this product. Um, it you should have received it as complimentary as part of your upgrade to 609. So if you're not on 609, it's a really exciting prospect for you. And if you are on 609, I know that some of you are already using this product and I hope you learned something new today. Um, and those of you who aren't using it, you'll be excited. This session is also going to be designed as an overview to show you how easy and intuitive this product is and all of the next generation products and the new reporting that you'll have received as part of 609. We will also show you the standard reports and how to and how to customize these reports for you once again so you can see how easy it is to use your data so now i'd like to introduce you to michelle uh, fitzgerald who will conduct the session michelle is one of our senior business consultants and i think most of you will have worked with her at some stage um, she's very talented and i'm going to pass over to michelle to do the really hard part which is show you what's exciting about this product Thank you, Michelle. Okay, thanks very much for that, Gail. Uh, today's session is just to give you an idea of what the GL reporter can do. Um, Gail's correct in what she says, that it's, it's a really useful tool that is exceptionally easy to use. It lets you sort and organize your information, how you'd like to see it, drill down, look at the data in the way that you need to look at it, and um, then from that be able to make really good informed decisions. So that's essentially the session objective. And <clears throat> I liken the GL app reporter to like it's just a giant cube of data where there's all these fields and columns and the information is pre-populated and totaled in lots of different ways. And you know, this this tool allows you to slice and dice that information and see it see it how you you'd like to. So, uh, we'll we'll dig into dig into it now. Whoops, wrong one. Excuse me for that. Okay. So, let me just get the right screen up. So, this is our master's database. Um, for 609 and your database may look similar with menus down the left or menus across the top but from within our finance menu with the after you've had your, your 609 upgrade you'll find down the bottom here a uh, link to the GL reporter so to activate the GL reporter we go into that link I'll just yep that's on 110 so hopefully you can you guys can all see that at the top of the reporting screen, you can choose the financial year that you'd like to run your reports for. So I'm going to choose last year for the purposes of this exercise and the for when you want to see the information. So as at. So our financial year runs from April to March. So I'm going to look at all of last year's data. And when I want to get some results, I just click on the get results button. So with the GL reporter, one of the cool things is that we've provided eight standard views of data. So these can be accessed in the drop down list here. So at the moment, I've got my actual monthly P&L and I've got it month by month with my year to date total here my year-to-date budget and then the full year-to-date. If I want to, if I change to the current month versus budget P&L, then <clears throat> you can see that this is a completely different view and this is more likened to what you might look at on a month-by-month -month basis with your current, your current period budget and variances and your year-to-date um, information and budgets and variances. So there's eight views here, which you get to start off with without having to sort of think about anything really. So I'm gonna look at 
this one to start with, the one that came up when we first came in. Now, currently, that's my default view. So when you activate GL Reporter, this is the view that's coming up for me. OK, so you'll see here that we've got some sort of like familiar information that you're used to, division, summary, category. The description here has got the GL index and the description of the account. You'll notice over here that the data has some hyperlinks. So this gives you the idea that you can drill down and see, see what makes up that total, for example. So if I click on that link, basically it comes down to the next level and it's showing me all the data that formulates that total in the table on the left. And then on the right, we've got just a graph showing um, this information in a graphical format. When, when, when you hover over it, it actually gives you your total, so which is, which is pretty handy. So then within this report, this is the same as, as all the tools in this area are the same as the tools on the front. So we'll go back to the front and we'll have a look at some of those tools. OK, so one of the things that's really cool and easy about this is you can choose the fields that you'd like to see or untick the fields that you don't wish to see. We can do this from clicking on the plus button on the toolbar. Now, this is why I liken it to a cube of data, because what's really cool about this is you've got all these fields to choose from. So with the report that you're in, the fields ticked at the top are the fields that are showing on your report. If I want to untick something, so for example, I, for me, I'm not particularly interested in the budget, so I can untick those columns and you'll see there that they drop off from the right hand side. But down here, we've got many, many fields of information. So <clears throat> you can see here, and some of these are used by our, our default views and others, others aren't, but they're available there. So we've got first half information. So you can have your data and your actuals displaying in half yearly groupings instead of monthly. Uh, another one that we have is, look, we've got here last year's quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, and then the total for last year to date. There's budgets by month. There's last year's information by month. There's all these fields that you can choose from. Here's our quarterly totals. So lots of different ways to look at the data and then help you make decisions. Right, so what I might do though is I might add the summary order to my report. And I know somewhere up here I've got the division order. So I've taken away my, my budget information and I've added two order columns here that most of you will be familiar with if you're used to our general ledger chart of accounts. Anytime a field's added, it just pops it onto the right hand side. So what's really easy is we can just drag and drop this to where we'd like it. So I'm going to pop it before here. And then what we can do if we want to is we can sort by this information. So sorting's pretty easy. We click on this little drop down box and I can say I want to sort an ascending order by the division order. So now you can see I've got all my engineering together all my plumbing together and all my administration together. Another really cool thing about sorting is we can then configure the sort, easy peasy. So now I'm going to add another sort by the summary order. And then all of a sudden, we've got our income together, our cost of sales together, our recovery, our expenses, and so on. So, you know, it's starting to look more and more like the order that you might like to see things in. So that's pretty neat. Now, I'm pretty happy with that at this stage. So what I'm going to do is I'd like to save this so I don't lose this formatting and this layout. So all I need to do is come up to my toolbar and click on the Save This View. Now, when I click on that, 
it comes up with the, the view that's there. Now this is the default view. I can save it and override what was already there, or I can give it another name. I'm just going to pop my initials on here, and I can save that for everybody, and it's available for everybody, or I can save it just for me. So I think everyone might want to use this, so I'm going to save it for, for all users. Now, if I would like that to be my default view, every time I open the GL app reporter, all I need to do is click on the pin, and that then makes that view my default view. So every time I open up the GL reporter, the first view that's going to come, come to me is this one here, but it doesn't set it for everyone. So you get to choose your own, which is pretty cool. Okay, so that's pretty cool as far as our sorting and subsorting goes. If I wanted to, I could also then sort by description as well. But what I'd like to show you is some, some cool tools around how to filter data and group data, because this is really, really useful sort of stuff. So applying filters is um, easy. We, we use these little drop down bars here, or we can filter using this space along here above each column header. So you might be familiar with this and the, it's similar to the Nimbus web reports. So for example, if I wanted to look at only summary uh, general ledger accounts that relate to cost of sales, I can just type that in, press enter, and it's filtered to the cost of sales. So if I want to remove that, I can delete it again. The cool thing though about this reporting reporting app is that I don't actually need to know any of the syntax. So for example, if I don't want to look at any accounts that actually have a year to date total of zero, I click this little drop down, I click on filter using, and I'm going to say not equals, and then pop in a zero. When I press enter, then all of a sudden, it's got rid of the accounts that actually have a year to date total of zero, hence no activity. And I don't need to know the less than sign, the equals or any of the syntax. And it's, it's so that makes it really easy to be able to filter the data to what you'd like to see. Now, another cool thing about um, this app is the way that it can group because often, filtering and and um, sorting and everything is really handy, but we can actually roll up the data into groups and start off at a summary level. So for example, if I come in here and choose to group by division, all of a sudden I've got one line per division of information. It might be that that's what I, that I'd like to save that as a as its own view. So if I want to, I can save that, and I can say division group, which is really handy. So that's pretty cool. So if I go back, so you'll see here if I go back to the original actual monthly P and L, that's as it was. If I go back to my divisional group here. then it comes, comes in all rolled up, already totaled. It's got my filter on it. And then when I click on the plus, it's easy then just to drill down and see the information within each group. So you can expand it out if that's what you'd like to do. And then once you want to, if you want to ungroup, then it's just so easy to click on the ungroup function and return to where you are. So, I mean, that's just a little bit of a taste of um, some of the things that you can do. Uh, what I'd like to do is just sort of like take you through a, a quick scenario of maybe altering one of the other reports and views that we have here. So, I, I, like, I quite like the, the quarterly P&L re, um, report. It's nice and simple. It's easy to see your totals and it's sort of not as as busy as month by month by month. 
So for the purposes of this report, what I'd like to see is be able to compare my income across my divisions, my operational divisions of engineering and plumbing. So what I'm going to do is I'm not particularly interested in last year. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to get rid of my last year information. I mean, I'm a firm believer of less is more when looking at data. So I like to cull out what I'm not particularly interested in. Now, if I want to filter, as shown before, we can filter by this little box here or dropping down and choosing something. But the other way to filter, because there's always more than one way to skin the cat, is to use this little filter box here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this little sub clause where my division contains, if I can spell, engineering and plumbing. So if I filter that and then close, then all of a sudden, all I've got here is my engineering and plumbing divisions because that's what I'm interested in. Further to that, I'm only interested in um, the summary that equals income. So you can see here that I'm building up quite a um, bit of information in this filter. So now I've got only my income accounts for the engineering and plumbing. So it's, it's pretty, pretty handy. Now what I'm going to do is I'd like to look at this information graphically. So what I'm, I'm going to roll it up by division, which is pretty easy. And then what we've got the opportunity to do here is view the data in a different way. So at the moment, we're looking at it in a, in a table of data. But should I want to, I can look at it in a horizontal bar. So I mean, that's how easy it is to look at your data from a graphical point of view. So all of a sudden, we, we've got our plumbing division here, our engineering division there. We can see engineering has obviously been massively busy, especially in quarter three, and how each division is performing. So, I mean, really easy. Then the cool thing about this is you can save this as a view. So if I come in here, I can pop division income, say it's a graph, and save that. Easy peasy. Up here on this little hamburger menu, we can choose to print it or download it in various different formats, which is pretty cool. So if I come back to, excuse me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to return that to be the table. I'm going to save that as without the income and graph words. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then that can be a, a particular view that I've saved that I can come to and reference at any time. Now, if I if we look in this little tools menu here, you can see down in here that we have an export option. This means that you can export any of these views and tables of information direct to Excel or as an XML file, CSV or a PDF. So if we were to export this um, rolled up in groups to Excel, then it's easily just these two lines. But if you want the detailed information, then we can come back here, we can ungroup, and then if we were exporting that, that's what would come out. So, I mean, that's just just shows you how easy it is to be able to build up the things that you would like to look at. Some of the um, cool things that some of our customers have really enjoyed is being able to sort of like drill down into their costs and look at the recovery or the costs against certain plant or asset items. And that's a particularly handy thing to do. 
Probably the last thing that I'd like to show you is just some of the conditional formatting that we can apply. So I'm just going to choose, <clears throat> excuse me, this report here. So you'll see here that I've opened up this report and immediately over here I've got a little exclamation mark coming up against that account. And this is based on this formatting here. So if we look here, we can see that I've put on a little rule around if the summary is income, but the year to date is less than zero, then highlight it. And this sort of formatting can be used um, to, to highlight areas that you may have concerns around. If I want to edit that, we, we can see here what the filter is doing. The other thing we could do if we wanted to, to make it stand out even more, is make the, the font red. So if I then apply that and close that, then you can see immediately that draws the eye to that data. Um, there's lots of other different ways to apply formatting and grouping and graphs and charts all through this, this app and um, the opportunity to be able to build the reports that you'd like to see and save them is um, it's pretty vast. So that pretty much gives you a taster of what the GL app reporter can do. So um, Gail, have we had any questions? come through. I think your presentation is so good. <laughs> You've answered all of them. Okay. Surely not. Surely um, not. One, yeah, well, one that did come in earlier um, in the week is who can get access to this? What can they see? How can we, how does that all work? Right. Yeah. So with the GL Reporter, it's a licensed product, just like any of the Nimbus software. And so when when you get the GI reporter, it's available for anybody in the company, um, but you can choose which users have access to it. So it's licensed not just for the company, but for the individual user within the company. Obviously, financial information is um, can be sensitive, and so there's a certain level of privacy and confidentiality around this. So you can choose who in the organisation gets it. And then the other cool thing about that is, is that we've added an extra layer to um, if you've got basic access, then it's just read only and what's there and published is all you can see and use. And then there's advanced and administrator level access for those users that want to build more of their own reports and um, dig down a lot deeper into the data. Cool. Oh, and we were talking earlier um, about how the, the clients that you've already trained and you were saying some of the excitement. What were yeah. probably one or two of the most compelling areas that excited those clients? Yeah, look, I mean, we've, we've had some really good feedback um, regarding the GL Reporter. One, just because it's so easy to portray the information in a graphical interface. And if, if you, if all the um, attendees of this webinar noticed, there was lots to choose from, um, from, from that. So not just your sort of vertical and horizontal bar charts, but also pie charts, area charts and everything like that. And it's pretty easy to do. So that's one of the things. And we've, I've got, um, I'm very aware of a particular client who's built up some views and charts that, that she then includes in their board reports at their month end. And then the other thing, um, one of the other bits of feedback I've, I've had is just that capacity to drill down and then ascertain certain costs that they that the company is wanting to keep an eye on each month. So like fuel per ve vehicle, you know, so to be able to look at, um, have a table of data grouped up by vehicle, which shows the fuel cost per month. And then they can see, you know, as costs are increasing, they can make sure that they've got the right costs on their plant to make sure that they can get adequate recovery from that. So, yeah, stuff like that's been been Pretty really cool. good to see. Yep. We've got a couple of questions just come through. One from Craig is, can you set up who sees what by the current security groups versus per user? 
Uh, yes, yes, you can to a degree, Craig, um, because the where you get the basic and advanced and administrator, that's set against the users and their user group. And then the other thing within that next generation background, you can then also allocate which users or which groups see which views. So yeah, you can do any of that. Cool, and a question from Joe. Can you attribute, attribute say, a debtor access or creditor access that can see only that information? I think the answer to that is yes, but I'll let you. Um, I, I would anticipate yes, yes you could, because if you've got views that are built just around debtors and creditors, then you can then publish those views to those particular users. It's not something though that if you say this person is debtors, this other person is creditors, that they then only see those particular accounts. It would be a matter of just building the views in the in the geo reporter that you would be happy with them seeing and then publishing it to those either those groups or those particular users but it might be um joe that you're you're probably we've got some dashboards um coming through an office suite of dashboards we've actually got available and they'll focus very much around um, debtors, creditors, and the, and the bank. So, um, lots of financial information available with that on the focus. And I'm just conscious of time. We've got about two minutes left, but we've got a question from Melissa. So, if we can answer it just really quickly before we wrap up, is can I'll do you my rename? Best. Yeah. <laughs> can you re? Yes or no? Uh, can you rename the Q1 to Q4 to be months? Q1 is April to June, for example. So the the field labels, yes, that's something that um, we didn't. I did. I didn't feel. Well, it kind of digs a little bit deeper into what the GL reporter is capable of, yeah. is to add custom fields with your own labels and um, calculations as well. So, but that's sort of just digging down into the nitty gritty. But yeah, in answer to your question, Melissa, you can. Excellent, Tim. I don't know if I've got enough time. Is there any way, Michelle, we can have reports generated and automatically sent via email to specific users in a specific day each month? Oh, I expected that question from you, Tim. <laughs> um, look, in short, Tim, I'm not 100% sure, but um, the, a lot of this next gen stuff has emailing capacity and capabilities. So I'll, I'll, I'll ask our production team and we'll, when we send out the recording, I'll have an answer for you. Awesome. That's great. Thank yep. you, Michelle. Um, no problem. And thank you, everyone, for joining us.